basically putting neurons on electrodes. This allows us communication with neurons so we can send them signals, electrical, and we can also read the signals from neurons. Somewhere in a lab in Switzerland, a group of researchers sent an electric signal pulse to a network of living neurons. And guess what? The neurons responded. They adapted. They learned. And for the first time, a computer made of living cells began to behave like something far more powerful than any line of code. And the whole idea is to have a processor which will be living neurons. So like today we have silicon processor, tomorrow we will have a bioprocessor. That will be living neurons processing information. And if I may ask, what is the average life of a neuron cell? It's around three months. Our success, I think, was seven months. We put it in our uh, recent newsletter, but that was outlier. Most of the time it's around three months. The neurons are good in processing efficiently, very complex information. Yes. So this is what Brain is doing very well. And we think that biocomputer uh, will have the same properties. Remote access to living neurons uh, is a bold idea. One that requires not just scientific sophistication, but ethical architecture as well. And I'm sure listeners will want to know how you think about safety, oversight and integrity. I think safety is not a big problem. Uh, actually, the biggest danger is that uh, neurons will get contaminated. It's a big challenge in biology in general. And that's something, uh, let's say the safety of the neurons, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, because they don't have immune system, of course, so that means that any bacteria or something can be a fungi can be a huge problem in the lab and the, then the cells die. Today, we are joined by someone standing right at the center of this moment, Dr. Evelina Curtis, neuroscientist, biocomputing innovator, a leading voice in the team bringing the neuro platform to life. Evelina, welcome to Drug Diaries.